Hello, so today I've come to the beautiful West Water in the Western Lake District and I've got a couple of hours until the sun sets behind these mountains in the background and I'm hoping to get a shot of some trees, the scree slopes and Great Gable in the background. Now Great Gable's got snow on it as well which is fantastic as do the scree as well coming down the side which is lovely so weather conditions are perfect at the minute although saying that we do have quite a bit of cloud now sort of forming towards the west and um, hopefully it's not going to block out the last sort of few minutes of sun that we've got available today so I'm really hoping to be able to get some nice light on the mountains in the background so we've got a short walk round to this boathouse and we're going to get it set up and take a shot and if we do manage to get a shot then we'll probably go through the editing process as well because I haven't done a shoot and edit version of the vlog for a while so I think it'll be quite a good thing to do. So, let's get on this trail, see if we can find our composition for this evening. So what an amazing backdrop this is, it's absolutely beautiful, it really is incredible. There's not a single breath of wind, so this lake is like a mill pond, it's incredible. So we've got tree on the left hand side and we've obviously got the mountains in the background covered in snow, looking great. I'm just waiting for the light to come around the edge of this mountain now, hopefully it's going to come round as it sets and we'll be able to get some light, lighting up the um, mountains in the background, we've got great gable there which is beautifully covered in snow. It just looks incredible, it really does. And as we're kind of talking now, the clouds are moving across, some real high uh, clouds moving across. So if that catches as well, it could be really good actually. So I'm just gonna fine tune the composition because there's an island of scree just here, which kind of breaks the reflection a little bit of that tree. And I'm just gonna move around the bank here now and spend half an hour or so and just really sort of tweak the composition, see if I can get absolute best out of this scene I can. So. I'll catch you in a minute. So I've got the composition set up. Um, I actually came back to the first place that I started at, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We've got, the, we've got the best composition I can find here and it kind of eliminates that Scree Island. I think there is a good shot with the boathouse in it as well, but for me, um, I'm thinking about more the mountains that I'd like to capture and, and obviously, if I'm a bit further around that way, the boathouse is in the shot, but there's less of the mountains, and I really wanted to capture that snow on the mountains, so I've stayed in this position. I've tweaked it a bit more, lifted my tripod a bit higher, just to make the reflections look a little bit better as well. But my only main concern is this, if I spin around, you can probably see behind me, is this massive gray bank of cloud that's forming, and it's blocking the sun, basically. Um, there's some lovely high cloud, coming over the top. I guess it's possible that it could catch, but um, at the minute it's looking like we're probably not going to get any light on the mountains, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. I'm quite happy with the shot as it is at the minute. It does look quite nice and the reflections look amazing. It's really still, completely still, it really is. So, you know, even if we don't get that gorgeous red kind of glow on the snow, I think it's still a decent shot, so I'm not going to be put off by it. I'm just going to try and uh, wait as long as I possibly can because if this high cloud does catch I think it could be a really good shot you know so the difference between a decent shot and a good shot so we'll see how it goes I'm going to probably wait now for a, an hour or so I guess until we get the best we can from this scene so yeah all in all like um, I'm pretty stoked with this spot it's a great great view it really is it's just incredible so yeah Wow, so as you might be able to see, we've got a bit of light coming through the clouds at the back there now. 
and this high cloud's moved across and I think it looks like it might catch actually. It's just starting to turn a pinkish colour so I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping for two things, that the cloud just parts at the back there allows the light to hit the peaks and also the cloud to kind of get a nice vibrant orange colour but even so it's looking beautiful at the minute, it really is looking fantastic so just a case of waiting a bit longer and seeing but yeah things are looking very promising at the minute so fingers crossed. So I think I'm going to call it there guys, it doesn't look like we're going to get this light, this low lying cloud is sweeping across the valley now and any chance of us getting that gorgeous pink and orange light on the high lying cloud has been completely ruined basically. Um, we've also got some people in a boat which are kind of disturbed the water as well so it was putting a small ripple on the water. So those two things put together really kind of put the mockers on the the gorgeous uh, sunset idea that I had but nonetheless I think we've got a decent shot anyway so I'm going to be taking these back to the computer and we're going to put them together and I'll show you how I'll go through the editing phase. Okay so see you back at the computer guys. So here we are back at the office. Now I was going to do a pointless bit of b-roll just to kind of tie us in from getting out of the car into the office but I thought you guys had come far enough already with this video and you just want to crack on and get the editing done. So here we are back in the office and we're going to get this photo edited. Now this photograph was particularly difficult uh, in terms of shooting and editing. There's lots to kind of correct with the image and the fact that we've got some very very bright spots in the image and some very very dark shadows in the image and a very very flat light as well. Um, kind of meant that it was difficult to use filters because of the lie of the land, the reflection, so no filter is going to work at all on this shot and this is a good example for using HDR. Now I like using filters uh, mainly because I, I just enjoy using them but they don't always work and when they don't HDR is a very very good alternative. So here we are, we have our three bracketed exposures. So this is the correct exposure, as you can see by the histogram. We're not touching either side, so it's uh, got all of the information in it. This is a one-stop overexposed, and this one is a one-stop underexposed. So if we blend these three images together, because the conditions were so still and there was no movement in the trees, this is a perfect uh, perfect way to use HDR. Nothing's moving in the scene. There's not, not even a ripple on the water. It's perfect for it really. We're not going to get any ghosting in the trees or anything like that. So, so we're going to blend these three exposures together. We're going to highlight the first one, highlight the last one, hold down shift and click and it will highlight those three. We're going to right click and photo merge HDR. Now it's going to create the preview for us and here's our preview and I'm just going to click auto align and just going to click merge. Now I've already done this so I'm not going to do this part because uh, it will just add another one in and there's no point. So here's our merged image. Now as you can see it looks a little bit underexposed but we've got so much more detail within this shot now that we can pull out using the sliders in Lightroom. So it's going to give us a lot more flexibility. First off I'm going to come down to the bottom here and take down the sharpening and the noise reduction because I like to do that in Photoshop. I think it gives better results, certainly for Fuji RAF files. So first off, we're gonna boost the exposure to around one stop, somewhere around there, that looks good. Boost the contrast, just have a bit more contrast to it. Bring back those highlights down a bit, 23, something like that, 25 looks good. Boost those shadows a bit. Now I'm going to be doing a lot of corrections with the adjustment brush tool, so I'm just going to roughly get these bits done first. I'm just going to put a bit of vibrancy in there as well and boost the saturation. Yeah, that's uh, starting to look a little bit better now. So that's my main sliders done now. I'm going to be doing a lot of adjustments with the brush tool because I can be selective about what I'm applying to which parts of the photograph. So. I'm going to start off with the sky first. Now I'm going to click on the auto mask option and if we hold down O on the keyboard that's going to just paint the uh, the mask 
over the areas that we need it to go over. See, it's not pa painting it on the scree slope there, all the trees. So it does a bit on the mountains, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. So let's get rid of the colour. That's just showing us where we are with things. So I'm just going to bring the exposure down just a fraction, a little bit, and pull down the highlights a little bit too. Around about there somewhere. And that's just bringing back that detail in the sky there. So that's that's cool. So that's pretty much all I want to do for the sky right now. <clears throat> so my next is this area over here, this scree. It's a lot darker than I need it to be and I also want to boost the saturation. So again, I'm going to use the adjustment brush and I've got the auto mask tick. So hopefully if we click O, that's going to just mask out the mountain there, which it has done a pretty good job actually, which is good, like that. So, get rid of our colour, just boost the exposure slightly. Shadows are going to boost a lot, bringing a lot more detail back into it. It's about getting the right balance between making it look pleasing to the eye and not making it look over processed. Boost the saturation a bit, and that looks, yeah, that looks a lot better. So, the next area I want to work on is this trees and obviously we can clearly see it's way too dark so I'm going to just click done with that open a new adjustment brush still got our auto mask selected Let's hit O so we can see where we're painting you can see it's just um, applying it to the shadows in this area here which is great if you decide that you painted too far just hold down alt and that'll bring your negative brush up which will just remove any areas that you don't want okay so i'm going to start by boosting the contrast just ever so slightly highlights i am going to boost as well shadows i'm going to boost quite a lot blacks i'm going to take down and saturation i'm going to boost I'm starting to bring in that lovely detail now now sometimes when you're pushing things so far you can get artifacts or fringing and as you can see up here I've started to get some magenta edges and some blue edges around the tops, tops of our treetops here which is not ideal so in these situations what I do is just drop in another adjustment brush and just paint over those areas there and then just bring the saturation down a little bit and that will just get rid of those. You've got to be careful, you don't want to take it down too much. But you can just see that's uh, it's helped out a little bit, probably a little bit more maybe. Yeah. Just took that magenta tinge out of the tops of the trees there. So, so that has pretty much done it for the Lightroom side of things. Now there's lots I want to correct in this image as well. There's a lot of distractions if you like so when I was there and you probably saw from the video I was really struggling with the composition of this image there's a couple of things really that were the main problem one was this scree island here which was cutting through the the reflection of this pine tree any further around to the left and it came right across it and it was very very distracting and also I wanted to get the full reflection of the tree in and the only place I could get the tree reflection in without being cut off by this scree was here and obviously I had this edge of the bank if you like this uh, shale here in the foreground now I made a decision at the time that <clears throat> I just couldn't get the composition to work with the reflection and without this so I decided just to run with it have this in the frame and clone it out afterwards in Photoshop so a little bit naughty but I think you know in certain circumstances I think this composition would have worked you know if the angle of the light was different the reflection might have been shorter um, if the water was a little bit higher maybe the shale island the shingle scree island here wouldn't have been there so you know I think I think this image probably is doable in camera but just not on this occasion so I'm quite happy to take this into Photoshop and just remove some of these bits of scree that we've got in the shot. So that's my next stage. 
So let's go to edit in, edit in Photoshop and take this bad boy into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to start off by getting rid of some of these distractions. So I'm going to click on my lasso tool and I am going to draw around this horrible foreground. You can see we've got the marching ants. Now I'm going to press shift and F5 and that's going to bring up my content aware fill and I'm going to click OK and it's going to get rid of it and it's going to be perfect, hopefully. There we go. Let's just deselect that. Absolutely bob on, isn't it? Absolutely perfect. Sometimes this, the content aware fill does an incredible job of getting rid of stuff. It really does. So there's another little bit here which I'm going to get rid of as well. Shift and F5. OK. Let's get rid of that. And I really wanted to get rid of this as well. I think if the water was six inches higher, that wouldn't have been there. So I don't have a problem taking it out. This shot's all about a clean image and symmetry. And some of those distractions just don't really work for this image. So, you know, getting, getting rid of them is absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with that. So the rest of the bits and bobs I'm just going to get rid of with the spot healing tool. Just get rid of these bits and bobs. Just clean it up. Happy days, like that. It's looking so much better already. So really, the next thing I did was dodging and burning and I'm not going to run through everything I did because we'll be here for half an hour, but um, I duplicated my layer by pressing Ctrl and J on the keyboard and just zoomed in. Use a dodge tool just to add some highlights to the edges of these trees. So you want to build this up very, very gradually. And I, I probably recommend coming down to anywhere between 3 and 4% and then just sort of paint on the edges of the trees here just to accentuate the highlights that we've got and just to make the trees pop out a little bit you know like i said i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend ages doing this you know you play around with that as much as you like but as you can see it's very subtle but it's just adding a little bit more directional light to the shot i mean the lighting is coming from that side we can clearly see that but this is just adding a little bit more detail to that otherwise quite flat looking scene so that's pretty much what I did in terms of the dodging and burning mainly just on the tree trunks and in the reflections just to make them pop out a little bit more. Uh, once I finished my dodging and burning literally I flattened my image, duplicated it again, come to filter, sharpen and unsharp mask and leave my radius set to 1 but I boosted the sharpening up to around about I think it's about 135, 140 something like that for this image just to really make it pop and look crisp and these lovely branches we've got here in the pine trees just to make them nice and stand out and give it a lovely pop to the image now it's looking really really nice now I'm really pleased with how it's looking I think it looks great nice and clean simple beautiful reflections we've got in the water so that's pretty much that done and all we need to do now is click save and that will bring it back through to Lightroom. So the last thing we've got left to do here now is just to adjust the crop and I think for this shot I wanted to get the middle of the water line here in the centre of the frame. So I'm literally just going to bring that down and make it look a little bit more panoramic somewhere there probably. Just think it adds to the symmetry of the shot, keeping that central. So we've got the mountain in the middle, we've got the you know middle of the reflection in the middle there. So all in all, yeah, perfect. I didn't actually adjust the white balance when we were in Lightroom before. I don't think it really needs it. It kind of reflects the mood actually that we had at the time. It was quite, you know, blue if you like and, and this shot has got a lot of blue in it but you could have warmed it up a bit if you wanted to just to boost it but 
I'm going to leave it there, I think, guys. So, yeah, that was it, pretty much. Difficult shot to uh, shoot and edit. There was a lot of waiting around for the right moment. There was a lot of distractions as well going on with the, the people in the boat at the end there. The low cloud that came over and destroyed all the high cloud that we were hoping were going to clutch. But, you know, all in all, I got a nice shot out of it. I was really pleased. Beautiful, beautiful views there. Definitely go back again in the future. And there's a lot of different views all the way down the left hand edge of Wastwater looking back at Scaffold Pike and also Great Gable but unfortunately my trip got cut short because of the weather the, this was the, basically the only shot I took at Wastwater just one photograph I did take a couple more a bit further down but you know just for Instagram but this was the only shot I took there and the only bit that I managed to vlog from yeah the following day the forecast was just awful there the weather come in and the, the rain uh, the visibility was zero and the rain was torrential so I decided to call it a day unfortunate really because it would have been nice to spend the whole day the following day that was my plan to spend there at Wastwater take a bit of a hike at Great Gable not to the top but maybe halfway to try and get a nice panoramic shot down the valley but, you know, uh, there's always another time, so I'm not going to be too beaten up about it. I love this shot. I think it's great. Could have been better, but I think we always think that about our photographs. So, yeah, all in all, I was really, really happy with my short trip in the lakes. So if you're interested in your filmmaking, this was all shot in Eterna, and it had my Wonderlander LUT applied over the top of it. If you want to pick the LUT up, you can do. It's in the store on my Selfie page, so... Any couple of quid, you can go and pick that up if you want to have a play around with that. So I'll leave the link for that in the description. So, okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you got something from the video, and we will be out again very, very soon. Hopefully looking at some more locations, more local to me, some woodland that I've spotted that I really want to take a look at because I think there's some amazing opportunity there. So that may well be my next venture out. Okay, guys, I will see you very soon and have a good one.